Awesome. It looks like we are live streaming on Facebook. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our 3 p.m. Eastern Time Standard uh, session of our conference. We are about to play a video from our sponsors, um, and then we will get into our panel. Thank you, Kimon. Our family and friends are a big part of who we are. They are our biggest supporters and confidence and our source of bellyfuls of laughter. And when it comes to keeping you connected, Western Union is here to make it safer and easier with their digital services. Now your family and friends overseas can send you money without leaving home by using the Western Union app or westernunion.com. Just visit gkmsonline.com to register and share your banking details with your sender to start receiving funds directly to your bank account so you don't have to leave home to collect. Grace Kennedy Money Services, home of Bill Express, FX Trader, and West Western Union, doing our part to help you stay safe and connected to the ones you love. Thank you, Kimon. And thank you to our sponsors again. Um, we are going to start our session now. My name is Steven Snyder. Um, I hail from Manchester, Jamaica, but I am currently calling in from Boston here in the United States where I am a student at Harvard University studying sustainability. I'm very happy to um, moderate this conversation because we have a excellent cross section of two of our panels, which I'm gonna let Donna explain to you the framework of JD Tan and what we're doing here. But the purpose of this is to get people involved in youth and involved in the environment to showcase what, what they're doing um, so I'm going to hand it over to Donna, who is in charge of the youth outreach um, of J.D. Tan, and she is president of the Caribbean American Diaspora Alliance, and also a real estate broker in sunny Florida. Donna, please take it away. Yes, uh, thank you guys. It's been a long day. We've been at it since 10 a.m. this morning. So welcome to Jamaica Diaspora Day, everyone, um, the afternoon session. My name is Donna Morton Morgan, and I am the chair for the Youth Outreach of Jamaica Diaspora Task Force Action Network. That's a, that's a mouthful, so we really like to just call it JD10, right? So I'm going to, in in lieu of the time, we're going to just kind of wrap it up, you know, and I'm going to let the presenters um, do their thing. JD10 is a non-organization. We are a group of individuals that really just pour back. We love pouring back into Jamaica. We don't get paid for this. This is just our passion and our purpose. We have over 15 task forces. And I'm gonna just name them really quick because I know we're limited on time. We have Education, Education UK, Agriculture, Crime Intervention and Prevention, Immigration, Technology, Health, Behavioral Health, Crime and Education, Rewards and Recognition, Creative Arts, Youth Outreach, youth policy, legal sector, and parenting and other abled persons. So we understand that for us to make this happen, we have to collaborate with our partners on the ground in Jamaica. That is the only way that we're gonna have a success, right? And um, just to wrap up what we are focused on, we're focused on crime reduction, and we're also focused on uh, climate change and sustainability. So those are our two focus. And then our areas that we're currently focused on is in the Mountain View area in K Kingston and then the Salt Spring in the Montego Bay area. So we have partnered on my outreach, which is youth outreach. We have some amazing partners. We've got the National Youth Council of Jamaica. We have Lasco Chin Foundation. We have Coach Comrie of Our Kids Academy of of Jamaica, which actually we featured his video, and Mr. Foster of Mandingo Youth Club. So these are individuals that have taken their time to collaborate and partner with us to make this a success. All right, you can find us and you can follow us on jd10.org or jd10.co. We also have several Facebook pages. You can find us on the JD10 main page. Um, if you just type in JD10, and we also have a youth outreach page. So we, we thank you 
And you know, this segment is really called Plant North Tree My Youth, right? Because we want to get the youth more involved in tree planting, in sustainability. And we have to basically hand over the torch to you young people with all the energy. So Stephen, I thank you and for, for you know bringing in such awesome panel. I'm like the, old, the oldest one on here. Look, you guys looking so young and vibrant. I appreciate you and let's go get it. Thanks, Donna. <laughs> appreciate that. And thank you for that great introduction. So to those points of highlighting the voices of the youth who are working on the ground and making contributions in their communities, I'd like to first hand it over to Danielle Thompson. She's the founder of Nature My Therapy and Voodles Jamaica, two organic vegan distributors in Jamaica. And she's also um, part of the Global Shapers community, which she's gonna tell us a bit about and the efforts that they're doing. And finally, she's a graduate from the Caribbean School of Architecture. So Danielle, I'd love to hear about your organization and the work you're currently doing. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me, Stephen. Greetings to the entire diaspora and all guests present. Um, my name is Danielle, and I am an entrepreneur, blue economy, green economy, and a part of the Global Shapers Initiative. So it was born of the World Economic Forum, and it's a group of young persons. There are over 400 and 63 hubs across the world, a few in the Caribbean, Jamaica, Kingston hub being the one that I'm a member of. And we approach um, a solution, we take a solutions approach to problems that are present in the global community or personal community and regionally. And we find that through collaboration and connection with hubs right across the world, we're able to take an approach where you know you have smaller island states with you know larger um, groups solving similar issues. We feel that young people coming together is way more connected than we may have realized. And thanks to the recent events where most things are now digital, the world has gotten even smaller. Uh, we do focus on the environmental aspect of the challenges that small island states face. We have decided for the 2020, 2021 year to focus on reforestation, recycling. And with recycling, it's not just with plastics and items, but it's also with food recycling, understanding how waste has contributed, you know, to a lack where there could be a fill and a share in the community. We also are aiming virtually to have climate change become real to the general populace, to young people, younger than even ourselves, um, make it relatable, make it real, and then that's where action can take place. So we work with different schools in different communities. Um, normally it is with underprivileged kids and whether it's mentorship, we were focusing on male mentorship and making issues that are real to them, real to us, bridging the gap between corporate and with the school system, having persons look broader at what is possible for them. Uh, we're of the opinion that if each one mentors another and shows a new way of how you can coexist, different opportunities will open up and everyone benefits. So it's really a pleasure to be here today to be able to you know, share what we've been doing. Awesome, thank you, Danielle. So I have a quick question. If someone wants sure. to get involved and they are in the right. diaspora, who do they get in touch with? How do they get in touch um, to participate and, and you know, contribute to the programs Kingston Shapers is doing? Well, the first step would be to follow us on uh, at um, Kingston Hub on Instagram. On LinkedIn, it's again at Kingston Hub. We have a list of the different projects that we've been working on. You would connect with myself or any one of the members who would be monitoring the board. And then you would see, we call it Friends of Shapers. So if you want to be a direct member, we have a recruitment process that happens at the beginning of the year. And if you want to just contribute, see what we're doing, see where you could fit in with all that's happening, make you know contributions of your time, you would then be able to join the group and have 
a platform to express what it is you'd like to do and how you could fit in. So that's LinkedIn, that's Instagram, and we would connect with you via email at kingstonshapers.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for that uh, presentation of what you're doing. So moving right along to our next panelist, I'm going to introduce Chaz Garraway. Um, Chaz hails from Bahamas, but we've adopted him. And that's why he's here, because he's going to share a project that I'm helping out with as the youth lead for Jamaica. And I thought it would be appropriate to bring in our regional lead um, to explain how great this project is and how um, informative and awesome it is to see the collaboration among our Caribbean neighbors. So Chaz, he's a commercial pilot and an engineering student at Dale House University. Um, and also now he's working as the chair of the youth outreach of the Caribbean Philanthropic Alliance, which Lasco Chin Foundation is a part of. So big them up as well. Um, and I love that he's been doing a lot of sustainability conferences and blogging on Instagram, which I'm sure he'll mention as well. So Chaz, please take it away. And I know you have a short presentation that you wanted to share with us. So feel free to share your screen when you can. All right, thanks, Stephen. I mean, that's a, it's a pretty big introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. As Stephen said, you know, I'm not Jamaican, but I'm here to um, tell you all about a little, uh, well, not a little, but a project that we're working on regionally. So it does affect all Jamaicans. Um, so the Caribbean Philanthropic Alliance is a regional um, philanthropic group organization that's trying to achieve the UN development, sustain, the UN sustainable development goals in this decade and so throughout the region. And so to do that, we need to, we had to reach out to a bunch of all of the countries really and to get um, by and, and get people to coordinate together. And so one of our um, first projects, well, our first project is the 1 million tree planting project where we are aiming to plant a million trees throughout the Caribbean by June, 2021, which will be pushed back due to COVID. Um, but you might ask why trees? And so there's a, there's a lot of reasons for trees. Um, mainly, you know, everybody's familiar with the idea that trees are the earth's um, lungs, basically that they give us oxygen, they take carbon dioxide, they help with global warming, but there's other benefits as well, including food security through fruit trees. Um, when we look at natural defense, so mangroves and beach stabilization trees, they help a lot with storm surge, um, even sea level rise. And then I'm sure everybody has that one grandmother or aunt that go that uses bush medicine for any ailment. So medicinal trees are also um, a part of the project. And so there, as you can see, there's a lot of benefits that trees can give you. And, um, you know, we, we were trying to stick in that, that mindset of climate adaptation, climate mitigation, and also being resilient, especially in a time like this during COVID, you know, we need to be more resilient and not have to depend on so, importing so many different things. Um, and so in saying, in saying all of that, um, one of our major, one part of our project that we're running throughout this summer is a competition called It Starts With a Seed. And so I'm just going to share a flyer that we have for it. Um, Stephen, can you see it? Okay, cool. So It Starts With a Seed. Um, we have sponsors from across the Caribbean, Trees That Feed. Um, Grace Kennedy, as you mentioned before, Stephen, uh, Caribbean Girls Hack. And basically the whole idea of the project is, well, the competition is that you plant a seed that will grow into a tree and you just take, um, you record a record of it over a 10 week period. So whether you take a picture or a video and you say how you're taking care of the tree, um, if you're, you know, how often you water it, uh, what type of soil you use, however you are taking care of it, you just document that, um, post it on social media. I promise the registration is very vast, maybe a minute max. Um, and there's four categories, novice, people who have never planted a tree before, uh, medium, people who planted maybe they're okay, and then expert planters and then differently abled. And each category has a first, second and third. So you have, there's a lot of chances to win cash prizes. Um, 
to find the link to our registration form, you can look on Facebook at the Caribbean Philanthropic Alliance uh, Tree Planting Project or on Instagram with the same title. We also have a website, carafilalliance.org. Um, and, you know, one of the main uh, goals of the Carafil Alliance is partnerships, which is UN, the UN is SDG 17. And so in trying to uh, accomplish or achieve partnerships or that goal, uh, we really want to forge relationships between people from different countries throughout the region. So just like how through the Alliance, I was able to meet Stephen, um, you know, we want to forge that sort of, or create that sort of space where people and young people and older people, everyone can just cooperate and work together to fight some and really fix some of these challenges that we have, you know? And so I, when looking at this tree project, I see it as, you know, a lot of the times you look on a global map and you look at the Caribbean and sometimes it's just Cuba that's there or, or something or a little dot, you know, although as individual countries, we might be very small. Um, if we can work together and we all do our part, we could really, um, really work together and show that, you know, even though we're small, we could still make a big difference and show some of these bigger countries, you know, how to work together. Um, but to, to close out, um, seeing that this is a youth uh, panel talking about youth leadership, um, I think it's, it's very important to note that it's never been easier to, to do something big and to make a difference. And especially our generation right now of, of young people, we have so much, we have the ability to change any problem that we want to, as long as we have the drive. And so to any young people watching today, I just encourage you to whatever, whatever your passion is, even if it's not about the environment, um, especially if it's, if it's about the environment, but if it's not, you know, find what your passion is um, and see how you can make a difference. Because I mean, once you have the drive and the passion, you'll find people who will help you to make the change that you want to see. And then, you know, you just go out and do it, but reach out. I hope everyone um, tries to plant a seed, uh, uh, apply for our competition. You know, it's a chance to win some money. And if you, if you win, you get, even if you don't win, you still could have a tree at the end of the day that could bear fruit. So um, please apply. And thank you for having me on Jamaica Diaspora Day. I hope, um, everybody enjoys their day. Thank you so much, Chaz. That was really great. And I really do hope that uh, some people will be inspired from this um, presentation, both from the words you gave and, and of the tree competition. Um, and if you want to get in touch with Chaz, I'll put his, um, maybe he can put it into the chat, his, uh, his Instagram, um, so you can follow the work he's doing. And I will also put in the chat the Instagram where you can follow the tree planting project and um, participate and follow along with the competition. So um, at this time, um, to keep things moving quickly, I'm going to hand it over to Amanda, um, who is going to present about an organization that she's working with. She's a graduate of the University of the West Indies and has completed her bachelor's in geography and a master's in resource management. And I am really interested to hear more from her about her work as a catastrophe, catastrophe risk insurance scholar, because uh, my background is in finance as well. So we'll talk about that offline, Amanda, but um, I would love to hand it over to you now to tell us a little bit about what you do and, and the work you're organizing. Okay, it looks like we have a small, oh, so she's sharing her screen now. All right, thanks, Amanda. And you'll have to unmute yourself for us to hear you if you're speaking. Thank Perfect. you for that introduction, Stephen, and the invitation to participate in this, initi this really excellent initiative. Good afternoon to fellow panelists and viewers. Today, I will be sharing briefly on uh, the organization Caribbean Youth Environment Network, or uh, work and opportunities for your participation. So, Sienna 
It's a regional nonprofit organization. It's non-governmental and it is membership based. It was established in 1993 and conducts operations in 20 countries within the wider Caribbean region. CN focuses its resources on empowering young people and their communities to develop programs or actions to address socioeconomic and environmental issues. Now, our value proposition is built on three pillars, advocating for the environment and promoting environmental awareness, conservation of our natural environment, and building the capacity of our members to tap into natural resources in a sustainable manner that will result in sustainable livelihoods. We have reached over 10,000 persons through our school and community activities, conducted research into a number of public interest areas, such as youth perspective on climate change, energy, biodiversity, and marine conservation. We have also participated in a number of local and international dialogue, which have contributed to the implementation of various policies. This include participation in the Green Climate Fund Civil Society Knowledge Forum on Climate Finance, and that was held in Jamaica. Participation in the Social Good Summit hosted by the United Nations Development Program in Jamaica. Being a part of the United Nations Youth Climate Summit in New York and participating in the Global Youth Biodiversity Network for, Latin, for the Latin American Caribbean Regional Workshop, and that was held in Brazil. We have also partnered with a number of organizations to spread awareness through sensitization events, such as the Youth Climate Change Conference and Jamaica's annual climate walk. Our conservation work includes environmental cleanup. We participate in international beach cleanup every year, for example. We also participate in mangrove replanting global water partnership rainwater harvesting initiative in Jamaica. And we have also participated in the Kingston Youth Declaration on the Green Economy. So it's a very broad in terms of our participation. We believe in the development of our members and as such, we offer capacity building opportunities through entrepreneurship training, knowledge transfer opportunities, mentoring, and cementing partnerships with other like-minded organizations, such as the Jamaica Climate Change Council, which hosted their Youth Climate Change Retreat last year in the summer. Our short-term to medium-term goals seek to tap into the potential of our youthful population, which is innovative and technologically savvy. We will adjust the rhetoric with which currently surrounds our operation, so as to create a model that is more sustainable and beneficial to all involved. And to do this, we will give equal focus to the social and enterprise components of our operation, reduce youth unemployment by creating opportunities for youth to develop businesses in the green and blue economy. We will also practically apply the recommendations coming out of our research efforts. And altogether, we believe these actions will contribute to sustainability at the organizational level, as well as at the community and national level. To achieve these goals, we rely heavily on the support of similar organizations within the environmental and developmental fields. And I'll refer to my fellow panelists who went before me just now, who spoke so heartily about the importance of reaching out. We also partner with individuals and other key stakeholders. So today I'm inviting you, my fellow panelists, as well as the viewers to get involved. And to do this, you can use one of three channels. You can partner with us, by offering your expertise for capacity building workshops, helping to train youth, and also to provide mentorship. 
I'm so happy that we're now in the era of fast track by COVID-19, where a lot more focus is given to the digital space and using these tools. So we also welcome opportunities for virtual study tours to show how it is that other organizations, whether in Jamaica or outside of Jamaica, are doing similar work and how it is that we can emulate what is being done. We also welcome members and we have different levels at which you can come in as a member, whether as a group, as individuals, and it spans different age bands. And finally, you can participate by volunteering to assist in our outreach efforts. So I thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you for listening. And I do hope you found the information useful. And uh, my contact information as well as the information for the organization is on the screen and I'll share this in the chat as well. Great, thanks Amanda. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, and so, you know, guys, what we've just heard is three really powerful organizations all working with youth and the environment in the Caribbean region. Um, and I just think that it would be great um, if, you know, if we can support this effort, because this is something that people are leading from the pack from it passionately. Um, and definitely where we bring the energy, the diaspora can bring uh, the support, financing, the expertise, the manpower to efforts like these. So we've gotten a few questions coming in. Um, if there are any more questions online or so, please put them into the chat right now um, so we can get to them before we move to the second half of our session. And maybe Donna, I can give it over to you in a second if they have any thoughts to share. Um, but we had Samuel Nelson. Okay, so Sam, you're just saying that like, you're enjoying the day. Appreciate that, man. Um, we had Andy Ellis asking how that, how he can get involved. Um, and based on the time, I think that was right after Danielle presented. So if you go to globalshapers.org, you can see all of the different hubs that there are in, in the world. And you can get in touch with the Kingston Hub um, through Global Shapers. And they're an excellent community um, working closely with the United Nations. Another question we got from the Irish Jamaica diaspora um, was how they could get involved with being a part of the youth. Um, and I, you know, if you wanna clarify Irish Jamaica diaspora of what aspects, um, I'm sure Donna could, could provide some more information there. But besides Kingston Hub, um, get involved with us with the JD Tan youth engagement. So check us out on jdtan.co and you'd be able to see information there. Um, I'm not seeing any more information here. So um, uh, Donna, do you want to say anything quickly before we hand it over? No, I was just going to actually give the website again, because, um, you know, jdtan.co or jdtan.org. And if they want us, anyone that wants to sign up and be a part of the 15 task force that I mentioned earlier, they can. But we definitely would love to have you in youth or any of the areas um, amongst these beautiful, amazing. I just love seeing our young people that are, are so passionate about their future because that future belongs to you. So um, thank you again. Thank you, Donna. Um, so before we move into the last session, I, um, I saw that Amanda posted her contact information in the chat. Um, if someone could please make sure that gets onto Facebook Live in case anybody who's watching the recording wants to get in touch. And I will post the... Um, information for the Caribbean Tree Planting Project, which you guys should check out our competition and uh, participate in the 1 million tree campaign to plant 1 million trees across the region and 100,000 trees in Jamaica. Um, and there'll be lots of more information coming out on that as we get through COVID together. So now I have the honor to introduce our next two presenters, Roddy Ann and Sherry. Um, they are going to lead us and explain a really cool project that they're working on as part of the Youth Task Force Network. Um, and so Sherry 
is um, a mother and works closely in her community with youth. I'm very proud to see that she's working on immigration reform and the immigration process in general. And also Rodianne, um, she is an academic in France. And it's really cool to hear how she's formed the founder of Languisol International, a language-based travel agency where people can travel abroad to learn, but also come to Jamaica as a language location. So um, I'm really happy to have met you both and really excited to learn a little bit about the project you're going to highlight for us now. Um, yeah, please take it away. Yeah, I got it. Thank you so very much, Stephen. And it's truly an honor to be here as I lead the Youth Policy Advocacy Leaders Task Force in conjunction with a slew of youth all across the world. And I'm so grateful to be presenting our survey with Rodianne, who comes to us by way of France. So our survey is on the impact uh, and advocacy and policy in the Caribbean region. And it's being conducted by our task force. We, we call it Youth PAL Task Force. And it is a part of the Jamaica Diaspora Task Force Action Network, JD TAN, which is comprised of over 500 persons in the Caribbean diaspora. Youth PAL Task Force mission is to develop and empower the next generation of policy advocacy leaders and to contribute to the multidimensional development of youth. The aim of our survey that we'll be presenting to you today is to get feedback directly from individuals throughout the Caribbean region all across the world about the gaps in equality that are exacerbated before and during the COVID pandemic also known as COVID-19. We want to get their outlook on higher education, technology, and policy. Policy and advocacy responses also by our legislators. That's right. The results of the Youth Pell Task Force survey will be used to design strategies and make policy recommendations that could potentially reform bilateral public policy and further develop the higher education and or technological sector in the current and post-COVID context. We therefore kindly invite as many persons to complete the survey as soon as possible on or before June 20, so that's this Saturday. Select respondents will also be invited to participate in the Institute of Caribbean Studies Legislative Week as part of Diaspora Diplomacy Day, sorry, with the US Department of State on June 23, 2020. So we'd just like to share a little bit um, on how our survey looks. So I'm just gonna screen share. So first of all, we'll be requiring uh, persons to, you know, just to enter their email addresses, to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your first name, your last name, uh, as well as your phone number. Um, tell us more about if you're a male or female, your age range, etc. We'd also like to know what country you're from and in what areas has COVID-19 impacted you? And we ask that you choose all that apply. Were you employed before COVID-19? Did you lose income as a result of COVID-19? Are you currently employed? Are you currently enrolled in a higher education institution? And if you are enrolled, which would you prefer to be successful in your education, remote learning, online learning, or brick and mortar institution? Did you take out a student loan to complete your studies? Are you pursuing schooling? And if so, what level or type of schooling are you pursuing? What materials do you need to be successful in your education and select those which apply? Finally, uh, for me, do you have to commute to attend classes or to get to work? Yes, these responses are so important and we encourage everyone to take our survey. Um, what means of transportation do you use? Who would you hold accountable in ensuring that you have all at your disposable to maximize your learning experiences? So we want to know if you think educators, the government, yourself or your parents perhaps um, would be responsible for your education. 
which country or continent is leading infrastructure developments where you live so we can gauge how to shape policy on your behalf. In a few words, we'd like for you to state how we can ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote life learning opportunities for all. And these are some of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, and this is specifically number four. And in a few words, state how you can, how we can promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. Another sustainable development goal number eight. And partnership for the goal. In a few words, we'd like for you to state how we can strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Um, from the diplomatic policy focus areas, which is so important in shaping policy for the next generation, what would you like to see reformed in your home country? And we ask you to list in order of preference. Um, policy is so important to us and we shape what we do, especially in advance of Diplomacy Day coming up with the United States Department of State. And these key four diplomatic focus areas, which include technology de uh, development, uh, also internet access. We're living in a technologically advanced age, but unfortunately there is a true digital divide, not only between countries in the Caribbean region, but within the countries themselves. Digital rights belong to all and developments in technology should be pursued as the benefits across as benefits are cross-sectional. So we want to know your take on uh, technology. Now, we've heard all along about the exoneration of Marcus Garvey. Would you want us to champion this cause as the United States Department of State would consider it now from a legal perspective? Uh, education, is that the pressing policy focus that you'd like for us to um, tackle? Uh, and specific specifically, we encourage you to check out um, House Resolution 1434, which is the Education Freedom and Scholarship Opportunity Act, which actually puts into context after this post-pandemic um, process what education looks like. And uh, finally, increasing U.S.-Caribbean relations, H.R. 4939, um, which is the United States-Caribbean Strategic Engagement Act of 2016. Now this context is so important because it is a gift to the Caribbean region. And in 2016, the Senate passed HR 4939 and it basically says that the State Department in pursuit of foreign policy, which favors an increased engagement with the governments of the Caribbean region, including the private sector and civil society in both the United States and the Caribbean. So that includes all of us, anyone listening right now, if you're here as a Caribbean American across the world uh, from the Caribbean region, this is a law that calls for increased engagement. This therefore furnishes several avenues of cooperation on a bilateral level so that further developments in the region can be achieved. Um, we'd like for you guys to really take our survey. So this is our call to action. Uh, would you like to participate in Diplomacy Day, which is June 23rd, 2020, with the Institute of Caribbean Studies, along with the United States Department of State, uh, the Office of Caribbean Affairs, in conjunction with us, Youth Pal Task Force. This is a low hanging fruit for any youth out there listening, watching, we encourage you uh, to make, uh, take our survey and uh, we'll be selecting one lucky youth to participate um, on a high bilateral diplomacy level. Thank you, Sheree. Now to complete this questionnaire, we invite you to visit a webpage at jdtandat.org. And for additional inquiries, you can send us an email at youthpolicyadvocacyleaders at gmail.com. Do follow us as well on Facebook at Youth Policy Advocacy Leaders on Instagram at Youth Pell Task Force and on Twitter at Policy Leaders. We would like to thank all those who have already taken our survey and to those watching, feel free to do so by the 20th. 
Also, don't forget to join us on Diplomacy Day on June 23, 2020. Thank you all for listening. Thank you so much. Really enlightening to see um, the project you're working on. And please do share the link in the chat. We'll make sure that it gets blasted out and we'll get more participation in that. Because I know um, working in finance, you only with good data are you able to make concrete observations and then act on them. So um, thank you guys for sharing that. Um, I'm not seeing any more Q&A. Um, so what I will do at this time is thank our panelists. Thank you all for coming and participating and sharing about your projects and supporting us. It really means a lot to me for you to be here. And I know it means a lot to um, members of the diaspora to learn about your projects. Um, and with that said, I know the day is not over, guys. There's a lot more coming up. So if you have not registered as yet for the rest of the activities, please go on to jdtan.co and see the rest of the day, diaspora day activities. Um, and yeah, I'll, and stick around. I will hand it over to Donna if you'd like to say any concluding remarks. Um, and then to Kamon, you can lead us out. Yeah, Stephen, this was awesome. Um, you know, we have to address, you know, this is so awesome with Sherry's angle and the youth outreach angle and the environment angle. The, you know, we have to, it's not one way, it's like a, a, a circle around. And um, I'm so, you know, proud to be a part of JD Tan and all the wonderful people that we've met in the past, actually, maybe six months or so, six or eight months. Um, very talented. We stay up very late. We give a lot of our time, our, you know, our, our passion, our love, just to pour back, just to feed back in whatever ways. We're always learning. We're always trying to get more information. Um, it's just been a pleasure. And I know we have a really, really, we have a, until 10 o'clock tonight that we'll be presenting different panelists um, for Jamaica Diaspora Day. And I uh, just wanna thank you guys. Um, I appreciate you. You are amazing. You all are beautiful, talented, and I'm proud that you guys are leading our future. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to work with you guys. And we're super excited to build on HR 4939 and to deliver those policy recommendations. So all of the youth out there, this is an incredible opportunity to join forces, not just with JD Tan and Youth Pal Task Force and your youth outreach um, entity, Donna and Steven. It's just, as you said, to come full circle. And we're all working on this bilateral opportunity to strengthen our home country, which is Jamaica, the land we love, where we'll come from. And we're doing our very best. So it's an honor to be here and to present with you guys. Great. Um, we're not sure if Leo is on at the time, if he wanted to wrap up and say anything. Um, no, so we're just gonna stop and get ready for the next session. I'll go ahead and Okay. Stop. So thank you guys again and see you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.